Oh jeez mate, choosing head pahonies is hard, eh? Well, by making videos about junk I'm interested in, I had no idea I would get so many people into audio. It's nuts, but it's almost like I've set folks up for a trap. <laughs> As audio is super complicated, there's no correct path, it's all very personal. I mean, not just music taste, remember that, you know, we all hear things differently. I mean, it's just like our eyes are different, like, is your green the green that I see? And then how they fit matters too. You know, I have a big head, so some pairs of headphones just don't work for me, not even getting into their sound. This guy's pretty nice though, I gotta say. But I've noticed through these vids, I've left a lot of folks excited about jumping in, but then pausing after seeing the never-ending sea of choices to pick from. And worse than that, audio is expensive and a luxury. You don't need nice headphones after all. And heck, like, we're still in a pandemic. There's a war happening and stuff wasn't all that great before it was happened to boot. Money's tight for a lot of people and yeah, folks are anxious about buying the wrong thing and I totally get it. So all the stuff we'll be showing this vid, I feel are just slam dunk, easy wins, reputations earned with time and have, I've personally heard feedback from. And yet regular suitors channel are gonna see a lot of familiar faces and for stinking good reasons because good headphones stay good. It's the best part about them. So people have been asking me for another cheap headphone video but like the same ones are still killing it because if they sounded great then they still sound great today Went. So mate, we're starting cheap and working our way up at like 25 to 30 Freedom Eagles KZ or KB year in-ear monitors. These are new, I'm gonna open them. Ooh, they're clear ones, they just came out. See-through stuff is fun. These are peace and quiet that rolls up into your pocket. I've lived out of IEMs or in-ear monitors like all through high school as a professional drummer, always kept a power on me. And I know professional touring bands actually go on tour with these exact models. Nice quiet cables and what that means is that, you know, when it's rubbing against your clothes, you don't hear it in your ears like <sighs> And I think folks just need a pair of these in the drawer just as a backup. It's nuts how good these sound for the money. Of course more expensive ones sound better, but like, gosh, bang for the buck. And mate, for the money it even comes with a microphone. Like this one time, mate, like I crashed my car, like doing a burnout. It was totally worth it. it like it wasn't my car, either. it was mum's Corolla. And like I didn't have any money, but I needed to get to my job collecting Tarzos out of sewer drains. Right, so I figured, mate, I'm just gonna make my own car. And it was going like fully sick. Well, I had all the skateboard wheels all lined up, mate. I had a steering wheel. You know, I took that off Mum's Corolla. But the problem was, mate, like, my little brother wouldn't agree to be the engine, and he totally blew the project for me. I'm so disappointed. You can't complain for the money. But let's get into the over-ear headphones, mate. For 50 Eagles, the well-known Samson SR850s. These are a clone of the classic 1970s AKG K240s. I mean, that's how you bring the cost down, just use a 50-year-old chassis. And, you know, you can feel how they got the cost down. They, you know, they are cheap. But super lightweight and actually comfortable. It's got the self-adjusting headband just like the AKGs. And these are open backs, meaning that they aren't sealed cups at all and they let all the noise in. Like, so if dad's listening to S Club 7 in the rumpus room again, well, you're listening to it too. But then the benefit is the sound stage, which is how 3D and wide music can sound. You know, instead of just left and right, it can start becoming like forwards and back and around. Uh, but they also bleed a lot, meaning everyone can hear what you're listening to. But hey, it's because they are intended to be used in a quiet space. And mate, to hear the old girls again, we're gonna need the referee, which is of course the Herdo 600s by old mate that sent. more top end but most headphones are colored in some way on us and it's just how it delivers its sound with the open back vibe the fit is great you don't need an amp they're only 32 ohm just smash them straight out of your phone or laptop and for like 50 bucks mate it's stinking awesome and like i think these came out in 2007 yeah just 15 years ago folks <laughs> although a quick honorable cheap closed back headphone mention akg k52s we miss you, AKG. So another set of budget open backs, the Grado SR60s. These are 99 Eagles. These are their new X model. Now with extra padding and a way chunkier cable. It's actually like weaved now. I mean, that's great for longevity, but <laughs> Grados are so light, I find that the cable chucks them around a bit too much. No lie. 
I discovered Grados because I was looking for a bad set of headphones. That's the truth. I mean, I've done a video about it with the confusing title and everything. It's because most people like extra bass music and there's good reasons for it. I won't bore you with it. But here's some headphones that are the opposite. It's about the mids and the top end. So instead of bassy, mate, these are sparkly. Look, it's the frequency graph for the Herder 600s, basically a way to draw the headphone sound. Kinda. So the higher the line, the louder that bit of the music. So down way in the super sub bass, then regular bass, and then here you got the mids, and then right up top is like the tit tit pit pit noises, cymbals, reverb, whatever. But that's the thing, in the mids, that's where the guitar is, that's where the vocals are, the keyboards, the trumpets, your backup trumpets. That's a weird thing about music, is that so much of it lives in the mids, like the bass, that's just kick and bass guitar. So I've got a greater graph here. This is for the 60 E's, not the X. Sorry, I couldn't find a graph. But the mids are so good with the greaters and with that sparkly detail up top. Although the X's aren't nearly as sparkly as the E's, they're a little bit more balanced. Wow. <laughs> Don't record that well. <laughs> I mean, it's like watching someone play VR. You can tell that it's amazing, but as a spectator, it's like, mm. but when you're actually doing it, it's nuts and insane. Like I was at Addicted to Audio store here in Adelaide, and I watched a 17-year-old dude try on some Grados for the first time, and his eyes just lit up. You know, the reviews are stunning. They are so comfortable. You, you gotta bend them to the shape of your greasy head, though. For me, they're a type of headphone I didn't know I needed. There's just so much detail in the top end that just goes missing. Watching movies and things, the sound of car tires over gravel. Mmm. They're only 32 ohms. They're super sensitive. They need nearly no volume at all. Great -o. I'm a big stinking fan, man, could you tell? So it's closed back time where there's no holes to let all the noise in or out. Traditionally, closed backs have more bass with how the sound bounces around inside, but less sound stage. But you know, the benefit of keeping noises out like Dad's S Club 7 habits. So at the same price, 99 Eagles, the Sennheiser, Herder, 2.8 hundreds. So I've owned this very pair since 2014, all the way back in university. They are uggo. They are, they are fuggo ago. <laughs> the coil cable is annoying and the headbands love falling apart on these, but I gotta tell you, these are the most robust whatevers I've ever owned. Like they do the folding up routine and honestly, I would just wrap this around like this and stuff it in my bag. Back in my gigging days, I was doing a lot of stuff where I had to play along to metronomes and recordings and the, all the bands on offer were, were putting pairs of these on me and I love them so much, I had to get my own. Views these at gigs, I've had students borrow these for weeks on end for their exams exams, they block noise, no batteries, good old reliable dingus in mate, and these work great for content creation, a real do-it-all headphone. These are a classic case of just get the job done. You want good and cheap? Well, be prepared for ugly. Hey, no one's gonna steal them at least, and that's their loss. These are great. But my favorite close back recommendation, you've heard a million times, the Bear Dynamic DT 770s. These are 160 eagles. That's more eagles than you can fit in a backpack. I love my pair so much that I got a custom set made by Custom Cans, which is why this cable is removable. I've even got a balanced one hanging around somewhere. Like, you want comfortable? Forget about it, here you go. I can wear these forever and they're made really nice. But I love these because of that bass. Look, it's the Herdo 600's graph again. Now here's the DT770's. What do you see? Yep. Flat, right to the end, meaning if it's got crazy sub bass, you're gonna hear it at the volume the artist intended. It's got the top end bit, but Bear Dynamics love doing it. Don't, don't worry about it.
close backs, it's amazing how wide and big these things sound. And these have been a musician's choice since they first came out in 1985. Yes! 1985, I'm telling you, headphones aren't like phones and consoles. They don't need refreshing every year. If they sound good, they stay good. Although some folks have been complaining recently about one ear cup being quieter than the other, which I hope is very isolated because too many brands have gradually started making junk nowadays. Uh, these come out in 32 ohm, which is good for phones, 80 ohm, which is my recommendation, or the big stink 250 ohm if you're a junkie like me, but you'll need more power, which I'll do it about in a bit. Oh, but then sheesh guys, you want like a, a, a serious set of critical listening open backs? Well, just get some Herdo 600s. These are still for sale ever since their release in 1997. Forget a 20 year old design, mate. My pair are from 1997. These are the original stone looking ones. This is how I know good headphones stay good. Yeah, I got these cheap second hand years ago. HD 600s are absolute legend. When they came out, people freaked out. But at 300 ohms, you're gonna wanna use an amp. That said, Drop has a 58X model to bring the cost down and the power needs to only 150 ohms and you know speaking about amps and such I'm sorry that I don't really talk about amps much to be honest I find that side of audio just way too fussy for me I tend to like just having one amp and piles of headphones but I know people who just go and get one pair of headphones and get piles of amps as long as I know I'm supplying enough power from a well-regarded DAC I'm happy like at home, I have a Cambridge CXA81, which has a built-in headphone amp in my lounge room. At my workstation, I have an Apollo Twin. That's a nice stinky amp. Mate, Theo, these guys are on a roll. My listening guide choice was the M15 right up until I got the M17. And these supply stupid amounts of power. I did a video about this not that long ago. Look, it's got four stinking headphone jacks. There is the Diablo here, which I usually use to blow up headphones, right? This is just an amplifier and a DAC, which is the processor that unpacks all the music so you can hear it. And having a great DAC and amp is a great way to boost the sound and you don't need to go crazy with these guys because my favorite one is Theo's little BTR5. There are more super nuggets coming out nowadays, but I think the BTR5 is the OG. Two headphone jacks, that's balance audio, that tiny one. It actually has more power out of that one. I've grabbed a balance cable for my Herdos and run it out of this and I loved it. I thought it was genius. And then bonus, this is a Bluetooth guy, yeah? So it basically makes your cabled headphones Bluetooth. It's got a mic for calls. It's got a car mode so you can leave it plugged into your old aux in your car. It unpacks audio better than your phone or laptop. And it is an amp as well. Honestly, this and some HD 58Xs, and I think you'd be living like a budget conscious audio king. So all hobbies have a similar trend, right? The crappy trash at the bottom, and then just the glittering beauty borderlining art at the top end. And then you got the rich, creamy middle. And that's where we are right at the moment. You're getting 90% of the sound on offer at a fraction of the cost of the top end. Oh, how are the mid-range, mate? Drums, cars, everything. The mid-range is a special spot for a lot of people. And, you know, a lot of people, you don't even need to go any further. I've given headphone tours to friends and family, you know, going from all the vintage stuff up to the crazy audiophile stuff like my Audisies, KA12s, the T1s. And honestly, after the end of the tour, they have another listen to these for the money and go, you know, this is probably what I get. That happened all the time. But don't worry, this isn't where I leave you, mate. But this is the point in audio right when it gets really deep. You know, it's like the reef and Finding Nemo, mate. Only with way less butts. Because yeah, it gets really deep from this point. Cause like all the headphones I've just shown you are absolute classics. They're total winners. They're gonna give you great listening experiences. And so if you're wanting more, it's gonna be something specific to you. And so this segues into the next part of this audio journey, which is getting into the audio scene. And the answer is forums. They are information gold mines for hobby inclined freaks. Uh, you know, you've got the HeadFi forums, Drop has a forum, and there's like Stare in there. there there's, there's so many. Because you never just want to read one review. That's only one point of view, right? And like a perfect example of this is Old Mate Crinical. Like Crin lives for audio. And like he's even been a patron of mine for like a year now. Dude's great. I've definitely used some of his awesome graphs and videos. But with headphones, we have very different priorities. So for instance, I've done quite a few videos on mezes. In a world of boring black ear cups, I just can't help get swooned by a design like this. You know, solid walnut. But because of me, poor Crin got absolutely bombarded with Crest to look at the mezes until he finally cracked. 
and he wasn't a fan. He said the classics are way too bassy. <laughs> and yeah, they, they do have quite a bit of bass. <laughs> um, and he didn't like the Imperians much either. He said the mid bass was a bit too big, which can make them sound kind of swollen and muffled. And I didn't notice this until I got the improved elites. And then only then could I hear where he was coming from. <laughs> but that's the beauty of Kryn. That's his specialty, is the sound. That's what he focuses on. But to me, there's a lot of stuff he doesn't mention. You know, for instance, what comes included? I found the most annoying thing about headphones is taking them anywhere. They can be like wilting flowers and Meze gives you slamming hard cases. No egg bags here. I mean, look at the Elite's case. Look at all these dents. <laughs> and that's because these guys get traveled around a lot. I love being able to take these to mate's place. Like, my mom nearly cried at the sound of the Imperians. <laughs> uh, and also, Kryn didn't mention comfort very much. These are the most comfortable things on the planet. I love the sound of my Odysseys, but I can't stand how hard they squeeze my fat head. I have a big head, and after 30 minutes, I, I just have to take them off. And also that high-end headphones can be incredibly fussy about what amps you're using. Like the Odysseys need so much juice to make them jump properly. The Elites and Imperians are super high-end headphones, but they're only 32 ohms. And honestly, they sound great straight out of my MacBook Air. Of course, these would sound better if you get a better amp. But that's my favorite bit is that you don't need to. And yeah, look, the cost of these is insane. But then it's just the... Oh, the craftsmanship. And then ultimately, they are comfortable because of what they're made of. This is carbon fiber. <laughs> An actual carbon fiber headband. It weighs nothing, yet it's so strong. Cause like, these are humongous headphones and they just seem so light. And granted, these absolutely fancy patterns do nothing for the sound. But there's a lot of high-end expensive stuff around the world doing stuff like this. I mean, you know, cars. A supercar doesn't need to be beautiful to be fast. It doesn't have to look great to be comfortable. But as an engineer, it's like trying to make something that's timeless. Come on, Top Gear fans. We all remember the Evo versus the Lambo. <laughs> And that little nugget has five seats, a boot, while costing a fraction. That's the gooey mid-tier for you. Every hobby is the same. The mid-tier always smashes. But I'd never seen any headphones that went this hard. And I ultimately don't see the harm as because there's cheaper options out there. You don't need to buy these. These are like a poster child. But as you see, me and Critical have different views completely. He's about the sound first and foremost, whereas comfort and practicality take a big slice for me. And I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who literally just want the glory of the sound and all that. You don't care if spikes have to pin into your head to get that sound. And that's what's fun about audio. There's no right way to go about it. Gotta share Crin's site, mate, in ear fidelity. He does so much for the audio community, right? I mean, he's saying, if it's not on the list, it doesn't exist. And you know what? I believe him. Look, look at look at this list of measurements he's done. Oh, look, K812s, my faves, mate. And then, Kabingo, there's the graph. I, like, the, the conditions you need to create to get these accurate, I mean, it's insane. Like, holy stink. <laughs> Man, the amount of work Kryn does for the audio community is insane. And he's also got a TubeU channel. Sorry I haven't mentioned anything about wireless. I'm just cooked on Bluetooth. It's just, I really do just prefer cable headphones. But yeah, don't be afraid to use the forums to ask. Because yeah, this is where all the pros are. Find some people who love wireless audio. Talk to them. Because I just tell you to bring back the headphone jack. Isn't that right, Frank? Bring back the headphone jack. But through all the messages I've read, audio and headphones might be the first hobby for a lot of people that they've really decided to get into, you know, finally putting some good money down. And a lot of people have already gone ahead and jumped into audio forums only to be barked at and scared away. Honest, I get so many comments from people saying, I went into a forum or a Discord or something looking for more info on audio and all these people just barked and yelled at me and I never want to go back again, I hate audio. And like, I'm in circles of many hobbies and I've noticed every hobby circle, you have the casuals, the regulars, and the hardcore. And like the hardcore are the people who live for the hobby. I mean, it's like me with drums. I've been doing it since the age of eight and I've thrown my whole life at it. I'm definitely part of the hardcore. And what I can tell is that we can be a miserable bunch <laughs> where we can love something so much that we're just bored, jaded, and we'll ruin it for everyone who's interested. Audio is no different. It's got its hardcore. And I've heard some really nasty sayings like, oh, you only like cheap headphones because you've never heard better. And you know what? Maybe so. But audio is 
is a never-ending pit before you're spending 60k on a set of headphones so you can hear the bongo man from September all the more crisper. Folks jumping onto forums, getting excited to say, yo, I finally got some SR8 fitties. Only to be told, your ears suck and you're a baby and that's why you like them. Huh, you should try hearing my... $10,000 whatever's there, then you'd know what good audio is. Maybe your ears suck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're not born for this. So if you get barked at, don't stress. It's called Welcome to Hobbies. But then on the other sock, as a hardcore drummer myself, and I was very regular on the forums back in the day, I gotta say, one of the most annoying things newbies can do is ask the exact same questions that have been asked a billion times. It's annoying because number one, forums are for hanging out and like chatting with other people, right? And if you're just answering the same stuff all the time, it gets annoying. But what it shows is that you haven't done a single second's worth of research yourself. So an example question I get all the time is, mate, what's the best amp for Herdo 600s? Well, the best way to find out, and I mean it, is to jump onto a forum and to use the search button. That is the best thing there is. All the headphones I've talked about today are absolute classics. They've been discussed for decades. Every answer is waiting for you. Bonus, you'll get the answer way faster than just asking the forum. And it's how I learned for this channel. So if you are going to jump in, you know, just do a little research before asking because you might go on a super fun tangent and find something entirely different in your research. Half of these dang pod videos were the product of research tangents, and I mean that. But then I've got to say at the same time, hardcore peeps, just cool. Just, just chill. There's a meme for what happens in every hobby because it's so bloody common. The new folks are the future hardcore, and it's how we keep the hobby alive. Yes, noobs can get annoying. Yes, the same questions are annoying. But you don't know what folks earn in a year. You don't know if they've been displaced by a stinking war or a pandemic or anything else. And hey, if they love their $25 in-ears and you got an issue with it, well, I reckon the only issue is that you're just jealous that they found happiness so much easier than you could. We're all in on the same hobby, which means we're all mates in some some way or another. Hey, it's like motorcyclists waiting to get their tires changed. Everyone's your best friend back there because, mate, we're all on two wheels. And then ultimately, don't be afraid to get a set of headphones as a test. If you don't like them, it's cool. You can always resell them on. Most of my headphones are secondhand and I mean it. These are secondhand. These are ancient. But hey, if you want to try a whole bunch, go to an audio store. They are dying for your business, and I mean it. They've always got demo pairs for you to try. That's how I've tried some Focals. Aren't we all looking for an excuse to get out and mingle again anyways? And buying online sucks. So I hope that's some tips about getting started and what to do afterwards. Remember, at the end of the day, this is all meant to be fun. Well, that's it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because, mate, $1 a month, I do it to videos. Quick dude, though, I do have another channel called Garbage Time. There's just no rules. I bought a van recently, and, and drums, and Frank's there. And I also have my drum stream on Float Plane. Hey, if you want to see me play live, I love all the people going like, oh, face reveal. It's like I've been streaming on Float Plane for this whole year. <laughs> you can come and hear me talk. But for one buck, mate, I want to share a pair of work headphones I've been using for ages now and their Austrian audios, which is where AKG are. Yes, I need to do a video about these proper. I'm still working on how to do it, but we're going to have a quick yarn about them. So thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Gosh, look at this alternate Frank dimension we're in. There's just Frank moving everywhere. Fra Frank, are you aware of this? Dude, this Frank dimension we're in, look at this. It's just Frank moving everywhere. Fra Frank, are you... There's more Frank here!